Personal notice. Danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Greetings, Mr. Lover. Time for another Let George Do It adventure. Now, before we get any deeper into the story, I would like to remind all you old grads to pay particular attention. Because this tale just goes to show what can happen when the boys get together for a class reunion. George, listen. Two telegrams sent just an hour ago. They came together. Mr. Valentine, brother and I need you desperately this evening, staying few days, Graduate Hall, Campus Seaver University. Both hopelessly embroiled in situation only too likely to be death of me, signed Joseph Durfee. Well, go on, go on. What's the other wire say? Uh, Mr. Valentine, brother and I need you desperately this evening. Please wear tuxedo. Be patient with our middle-aged foolishness, leading quickly and dangerously to tragedy. You can find us at party at Graduate Hall. Please don't delay. Not lying when I say it's likely to be death of me. Signed, Douglas Durfee. You are listening to Let George Do It. Our adventure will continue in just a moment. Now back to Let George Do It and George Valentine. Oh, Brooksy, I'm afraid this tuxedo will be the death of me. George, you look wonderful. Here, this is Graduate Hall. Yeah, quite a place. A lot of rooms lit up in there. I wonder what kind of a shindig this is. George! Look out! Over your head! What in the name of... A water bag. Paper sack full of water. All right, smart George, guy up there. George. Oh, yeah, Angel. Well, at least I won't be bothered by the starch in my shirt anymore. Well, for me, by the curl in my hair. Well, okay, chin up, Angel. After a few repairs, we'll join in the Durfees and the dancing. And maybe we can be the death of somebody. Hello. Would you hand me that box of Kleenex, please? Water bag. You got a water bag, didn't you? Oh, they're so funny. They think they're so funny. Thanks. So silly and so stupid. Here, I can reach that better than you can. Oh, no, no, it's all right. You won't spot your dress. It's not like one girl. Got a water bag full of cold coffee. Here, I'll fix the mirror for you. Oh, no, please. I'm fine. What's the matter with you? Reunion. Reunion, that's all. Reunion. So that's what this party is. I guess you must be the only outsider here. The class of 30. Dear old Seaver. Summer reunion, 30. Most likely to succeed. You've been crying, haven't you? Can I help? Oh, no. No most bashful girl in the class. That's what I was. How would I do anything but just keep it to myself? The wallflower's always crying in the powder room, isn't she? One of the most popular girls out dancing. Oh, now, look, please. Yes, her name's Cynthia. As in magnolia blossoms, only faded now. Cynthia. Just as stuck up and brainless as... Forgive me. Imagine talking like this at the age of 42, drooling in sympathy with myself. Weeping over the same mistakes that everybody makes. Oh, don't feel like that. horrible, isn't it? what a reunion does to people. The sentiment and the memories, even the most, the most likely to be happy. Well, thank you, Mrs. Brooks. Miss Brooks. Miss, of course. Not even the 30 we're all a class of. I'm Betty Durfee, Mrs. Durfee, 42. Durfee, bye-bye.
Oh, yes, they're all here. That was the star football player, that man was so fat. And over there with the glasses, man most likely to go broke. He's a bank president now. Yeah, yeah, but I'm looking for the Durfee brothers. Oh. What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> Joe and Doug Durfee, most likely to be popular forever. Oh, yes, the Durfee boys are here someplace. They're always here. Mr. Valentine. Oh, see what I mean? Dancing with the most beautiful girl in the class. Hello, Stinky. Son, uh, are you... Yes, that's right. I'm Valentine. Well, thank heaven you got here, boy. Stinky, would you... Oh, of course, of course. Good evening, Cynthia. You look lovely. Why, thank you, sir. Oh, sorry. This is Mr. Valentine, darling, and Mrs. Chesterton. Mrs. Chesterton? Isn't this the loveliest dance, Mr. Valentine? I was only saying to Douglas... Uh, darling, been... darling, please, I'll only take a second. Uh, Valentine... Well, I don't mind, Douglas. I'll just dance with... No, no, I'm sorry, but don't dance with Stinky. Well, whatever on earth. Are you jealous? Really, I won't step on her toes, darling. I'm sorry. I said I can't explain, but just stay there a second. Thanks, darling. Well, all right. Valentine. So you're Douglas Durfee, huh? I just spotted you over there. I only got back from the golf course a few minutes ago. Say, tell me, is a woman named Betty Durfee your wife by any chance? Huh? Oh, no, no, no. I'm single. She's Joseph's wife. Now, I'll find him, and we'll meet you after this dance upstairs in my room. For what? What's the job? What's going on here? Valentine, listen to me. It's, it's the sort of job you may not like. It, it may seem foolish. So should Stinky's death be foolish, or mine, or Joseph's, or any other man. Hey, or... hey, clear it up, will you? It's Cynthia there lady I was dancing with, don't you understand? And it's my fault, mine. I know I have to say this fast, but Cynthia and I are planning to be married. Hey, I thought her name was... Yes, Ch yes, Chesterton, yes. Her husband was in this class, too, but he's not here tonight, separated. Man's a fool. Be a divorce, naturally. At least I thought there'd be. Now I don't know what to think. Oh, I get it. So that's all it is. Get yourself tangled up with a married woman, huh? You're right, Mr. Durfee. I don't like this uh, kind Valentine, of job. Valentine, Valentine, I know how it sounds, but you've got to help Why? Us. Why all your urgent telegrams and it turns out to be just or a is case... Is it only a foolish middle-aged love triangle when the husband hires a thug? A who? Yes, yes, you heard me. Over there to keep an eye on her. I know how crazy it is, but... You mean the big guy? Yeah, that's right, the sourpuss. We thought he was only somebody's friend. Cynthia still believes he's just an attentive moose named Claude. And he's really a hired watchdog. All right, then. Stay away from him. Away from her. And when I bumped into him, I found he's carrying a gun. <laughs> stay far away from him. <laughs> that were all it was. It isn't just me, Mr. Valentine. Cynthia told my brother she was going to run away with him. With Joe. She... What? Well, never mind the moral analysis of a woman who can't forget how to flirt to destroy men's lives. She was even like that in school. The point is, she's even in more danger than we are. Figure it out for yourself. Her jealous, stuffy, proud husband has finally caught on. That hired thug Claude has come here to kill her. <laughs> oh, did you see him? <laughs> did you see him? That windbag, that fool. <laughs> The biggest success in the class, and he fell like a ton of bricks. Oh, why don't you shut up, Derby? <laughs> it's you who's going to fall like a... Will you stop laughing? <laughs> oh, you did a beautiful job, Valentine, a beautiful job. <laughs> and, and that Cynthia. <laughs> Never guessed the stories Joe and I were spreading. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> So it's all a practical joke. The Durfee brothers, most popular boys. The waterbag kids. Oh, no, no, no not that. No, 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 no. It's nothing amateurish like that. <laughs> we turned my sluice in the girls' gymnasium once. Oh, great. <laughs> At last reunion, we mixed up the room keys and the president himself walked right in. Buster, you're the kind of guys who want to be taken apart piece by piece. And you tag me for a fall guy. So I guess I'm the one to do it, unless Chesterton gets up here to your room and beats me to it. Oh, where's your sense of humor? Here, here's your check. Now get out, will you? Yeah. Chesterton's liable to be here any minute or in Joe's room upstairs. Oh, brother, there are two in every class, aren't there? And so you both send me wires saying it's likely to be the death of you. Well, Buster, for my money, oh, I'd like to... stop it! Stop it! There's no time. That's the point. Your little sucker act was just act one. Hey, wait a minute. You mean you're not through with them yet? <laughs> Joe and I cooked it all up right here last night. Got everything ready. Ooh, those Chestertons have been asking for it all their lives. We're going to fix them forever. Now, look, I don't think much of the Chestertons, but I think a lot less Joe of you. Joe and I are in love with Cynthia. <laughs> now we'll never get her. 
Hand me that bottle of ketchup, will you? The ketchup? What do you mean? Yeah. It's a shame to spoil a good shirt. But... <laughs> that does it. Knife. I'm using a knife. Pretty bloody. Oh, no. <laughs> I cannot live without you, my note says. Joe's is even better. <laughs> I'm a failure, and without your love, I can't go on alone. Phony suicide. So that's it. Sure, the death of us. We didn't lie, do you? <laughs> Hand me my note, will you, the top drawer there? Oh, I tell you, this is even going to top the time we stole the park bench. <laughs> What note? <laughs> what I wrote last night, I just told you. It'll even better than the time we turned the moths loose in the movie. <laughs> Can't live without you. We wrote it together. What's the matter? Well, my note. Where's my... Well, it's not here. There's Joe's stuff. But his too, the notes. Our suicide notes. They're gone. <laughs> no kidding. We wrote them last night. Put them on the desk here. Somebody must have... <laughs> little joke on the jokers for a change. You guys are so popular. And now somebody has stolen your big, funny suicide notes. <laughs> huh? Oh, it's Joe. It's Joe. It's Joe. I had to break in the door for her. Mrs. Durfee. <laughs> seen him all day. But the two of them were up to something. I, I wanted to stop it. They're, they're silly, Take childish. it easy. Take it easy, oh, Mrs. Durfee. <laughs> I'm afraid your husband's dead, all right. Apparently he shot himself. Oh, I'm sure that's what it was. His own suicide note signed right there in his hand. Yeah. I'm a failure. And without your love, I can't go on alone. Hm. Joe's stolen notes. The funny, funny suicide... Only now it's a perfect murder. You are listening to Let George Do It. Our adventure will continue in just a moment. Back to George Valentine. Summer reunion, the class of 30. They're all here. The fated, most beautiful girl, the most jealous and stuffy man, the most likely to succeed and the most likely to die. Two brothers, the irrepressibles, the perennial jokers, the Durfee boys, Doug and Joe who have kept things lively through all these years. But now one of them is dead, a victim of his own practical joke, guilty of writing a suicide note in advance and thinking it might be funny. But the suicide notes were stolen and Joe never lived to laugh. Well, if your name is George Valentine, you agree with Lieutenant Riley when he says that... Anything can happen at a reunion. Suicide. Yeah. Jerks who write their own suicide notes just to make some stuffy people look so. All right, all right, Riley. Let's stick to the facts. What time did Joe Durfee die? Oh, four or five o'clock this afternoon, maybe. The doc's not sure. But his brother Douglas talked to him on the phone around four, so it had to be after that. Doug talked to him? Yeah, sure. The pair of them had to double check on their cute little plan, naturally. And it was just after that that they sent those sucker telegrams to you. Yeah, yeah, sure. But and but... the checks. Doug was out at the golf course all day. Caddy had to reach him on the 10th green. And the operator here's got a record of it, too. It's a, a toll call, the only one placed here from the hall. Joe was here in his room, huh? Where was his wife, Betty? Well, down at a bridge party with the wives downtown. Oh, no, no, pal. This case isn't going to be easy, if that's what you're driving at. No, I was just wondering. Uh, where'd the gun come from? I don't know. Probably won't know. It's just a gun, thirty-two revolver. Yeah, he was holding it in his hand. The other hand had the note. Yeah, sure, sure. All the window dressing, all right. It was a nice, efficient job, and it could have been one of 200 people. And no clues, huh? Well, I thought I had one. Stinky Bronson had to break down this door, remember, when the body was found. Oh, what about it? All suicides locked their doors. That's what I mean. Another piece of window dressing. 
Because my lock expert in there says he'll absolutely swear that door was locked by someone who was leaving the room. Pulled it shut after him. So I get all excited. Uh, but my fingerprint man says whoever it was wiped the knob clean. Yeah. One of 200. Valentine, guess who had a reason for killing Joe Durfee? Guess who hated one of the most popular boys? Guess who has had nasty, unfunny, practical jokes pulled on them in the past years? Yeah, Riley, the whole class. Just to make it a more perfect murder. Valentine, I'm not going to apologize because we never grew up. We've been told off by experts, my friend. You should have heard how Joe's wife used to be on the subject. All of them. Yokels. No sense of humor. No sense of humor. I'm blind. I was out at the golf course all day. I know, I know. I know you didn't kill your brother. You were miles away, and plenty of witnesses knew it. Oh, that's not what I meant. I gave a trick ball to a guy in a foursome. Just took off and floated. That's me ever since college. You mean nobody laughed? No. Man who gives a hot foot supposed to beat the rest of the world in a punch. <laughs> Class of 30. Some very nice people, some big men, important. And the Durfee boys, oh, still in the hour of glory. Still way back there, 1930. Don't let that singing carry you oh, away. Oh, shut up. Not too easy to see yourself slip in a banana peel. Failures, if you must have it. Barely a penny between us now, Joe and me. So what? So nothing. Oh, sure. In the reunions, we kept it up. Most popular boys. And back in our hometown, Mr. Valentine, we're nothing. We're failures. Have a drink. Okay, so that's why you kept it up. But if I were you, I'd put the drink down, friend. Huh? There's a lot of people still here waiting to be questioned. Maybe one of them killed your brother. I said shut up, didn't And I? is watching you right now because you're next. Oh, or hadn't it occurred to you that your suicide note was stolen too, that it's still missing? That you're a walking invitation to another foolproof crime? So what? Maybe I don't care. Don't you understand? George, he's too upset. Maybe to it's talk. my final chance at a real big joke. How about that, Cynthia? Most popular boy in the class, that's me. Douglas, I'm sorry. You used to go on dates with me. Now, don't turn away like that. Please, Douglas, my husband. Sure, my... sure, your husband. Maybe old Claude is out loading a gun for me right now. For heaven's sake. I think she's heard enough out of you for tonight, Oh, stinky, shut up. You're not so mad at me, are you, darling? Well, really, Douglas, I should have been warned when Betty told me about your golf ball this afternoon. Wait a minute, wait a minute, all of you. Hey, stinky. Well, Mr. Valentine, I see no reason for our being here. I was just going to take Mrs. Chesterton to find her husband. I'm sorry, but I thought you were with Joe's wife, Betty Durfee. Well, every girl has her moment, Mr. Valentine. I was, yes. She's but... upstairs. Well, George. I just wanted to get you straight, that's all. Now, you've been around all evening, but you were with Betty when we found the body. And earlier, I remember on the dance floor, you were waiting for somebody in the powder room. George, Betty was in the powder room the same time I was there. Stinky, you told me it was only this afternoon. No, 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 no. Now, please, I don't have to explain myself. Stinky is an old beau of mine. Oh, Cynthia. Well, this is a reunion, Mr. Valentine. I'm afraid you'll only get yourself all wound up if you try to figure out all the associations. Just the same. Would you please tell me... Joe what... and Betty were planning to get a divorce. A divorce? Yes, yes, that's what I said. Well, I know when I saw her, she sounded awfully so unhappy. Mrs. Chesterton, what did you mean just a second ago when you said... Stinky, you told me it was only this afternoon. Well, he may be an old friend of Betty's, but he's also an old friend of mine. Oh, and my husband's, too, of course. This afternoon, I said. You said he was with her when she was supposed to be at a bridge party. But they only left for a little while, 3.30 or 4. Oh, stop it, stop it. 3.30 or 4, huh? Where were you? Where did you bring her? I don't have to end. No. I brought Betty out here. Here at Graduate Hall? Yeah, it was something about the divorce. She wanted to see Joe for a minute. That's all it was. And you understand, I didn't come upstairs. I only waited in the car. Stinky. Huh? How much money do you make? What? What are you talking about, Turfy? Valentine, my brother Joe took out a new life insurance policy just a couple of months ago. Life insurance? Turfy, wait! Turfy! <laughs> Get 
out of here. Get out of here. Lieutenant, I've got to see her. She did it, Betty. I said get out of here. You can't see her, my friend. She's dead. Suicide. Betty Durfee. Just like Joe was. Uh, only no notes. No. No, she didn't write one like Joe did. Durfee, I want to get something straight. That insurance. It's your idea, since Betty was up here this afternoon about the time Joe died, that she might have had her eye on his insurance. Is that right? Kill him? Using the suicide note she'd found? And now it looks like maybe she killed herself. Just couldn't stand what she'd done. Is that your idea? Mr. Valentine, I'm all through with ideas. Yeah, and so am I. A murder and then a suicide, both the same way. 200 people, everybody mixed up with everybody else. Don't you understand, Riley? Yeah. Your case is solved. What? It's a lot simpler than it looks, Riley. Betty was up here, we know that. She had a key, so she could have got into Joe's room. And she could have left without leaving any fingerprints. Look, Mr. Valentine, I'm not so sure. If a man had shut that door you talked about, Riley, leaving the body behind to look like suicide, he would have had to intentionally wipe the doorknob. But a woman would do it by accident, wouldn't she? When she was dressed for a party, wearing gloves. Well, of course, George. Then let's suppose for one second that when she arrived in Joe's room this afternoon, it was to walk in on a body. What? Joe, I mean. Dead. No, Ah. no, stay with me. Now, stay with me. While Betty was in Joe's room, she made a telephone call to her brother-in-law. No, no, no. I had a call from Joe, not from Betty. But the golf ball, Durfee. How did Cynthia learn about your golf course gag from Betty? Unless you told it to Betty. And I remember you didn't get back in time to be with her this evening. And there was only one toll call to the golf course. No. All right. I, I told her. So what? Douglas here couldn't have been the one who killed his brother before she got there. He was out at the golf course all day. Riley, an insurance policy usually has a clause in it that says you can't collect on a suicide. At least if it happens in the first year or so. What are you driving at? You said Joe took out that policy just a couple of months ago. Yeah, you're catching the drift now, aren't you? I, I don't because know your you're brother talking. wasn't murdered, he committed suicide. Ah. Suicide? Yeah, that's right. Joe killed himself. He left a note, didn't he? I'm a failure. And without your love, I can't go on alone. We know he was a failure. And the love he was talking about was not Cynthia's, but Betty's. Betty, who was leaving them, and probably for good reason. Valentine, those things I said You downstairs. said too much, trying to hang this thing on other people. But it was the insurance all along. Because when Betty phoned you, that was the first thing you thought of. You'd collect no money. You're crazy, And so Valentine. Joe's death had to be made to look like murder. You got a bright idea and explained it to Betty in the phone. And for a while, she rode along with a gag. But she wasn't standing up very well under the strain this evening. So that's when you killed her. I didn't. I, I didn't kill her, no. Hey, I get it. Especially since you're uh, probably the beneficiary, you'd collect it all. So you killed her, and you figure you could make it look like she killed Joe, no, huh? let, There let wasn't go. any practical <laughs> joke planned for Cynthia and Claude, no stolen suicide notes. It was all planned for us. That's what this whole thing has been. A cash-in on the kind of tricks he and Joe used to play. I'm a look out! That's better. And like all practical jokes, this one fell flat on its face. Back to the conclusion of our Let George Do It adventure in just a moment. It was quite a frame-up. Send us wires, call us in... Invent all that about Cynthia and how they wrote the suicide notes the night before? Yeah, it wasn't a bad setup, though, was it? Might have worked, Brooksy. Doug had the background to work with. Yeah, maybe he and Joe had planned to pull something like that on the Chestertons in the past. And it might have worked if he called in somebody else besides you to play sucker. Maybe. Maybe nothing. George, I mean it. Sometimes I think you are absolutely the most... George. Mm Mm-hmm. When you were in college, weren't you voted the most likely to something or other? <laughs> you really want to know, Angel? Well, of course. Well, I was voted 
most likely to stay a bachelor. You have just heard Most Likely to Die, another Let George Do It adventure. Robert Bailey was starred as George Valentine with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. David Victor and Jackson Gillis wrote the story with music by Eddie Dunster. Now this is yours truly inviting you to another visit with Valentine when you will again hear what happens when you let George do it. (laughs) 